We have Victor and Romain from uh, Ellen Markets, and they're going to talk about big lightning nodes. Go ahead. Hi. Um, so let's see if it works better with me, the remote. Not sure. Yeah. Well, great. Um, well, we are very happy to be here, you know, to, uh, with all of you guys. I mean, it's great to meet so many people uh, in real life, you know, people we've been talking to for the past like two years and we've never been able to meet. So uh, it's, whoa. so it's really amazing for us to be here. Uh, we're going to talk about the challenges of running a big lightning node. Okay. Uh, we started from scratch two years ago and, uh, and now we are in the top 20 uh, in terms of capacity, but it didn't went without trouble. So the idea is to do a very applied talk. Okay. We are not going to go into, thank you, uh, too deep in terms of technicality, but it's really going to be applied. So I am Roman, uh, co-founder of Ellen Markets, mostly in charge of like business development. And uh, I'm Victor, and I'm uh, mostly in charge of the technical side of the Ellen Markets. Yeah. Um, let's go. So, well, Lightning Network, so hot right now. I mean. That's why we are here, that's what gathers all of us, you know, Lightning Network is hot, Lightning Network is everywhere. Uh, it's on Twitter, it's on Substack, uh, it has enabled to uh, bootstrap the Bitcoinization of a whole country, so Lightning Network is hot, but um, as I'm sure most of you know, it's not always been the case, okay? Uh, and uh, let's go back a little bit in time, okay? Uh, let's go back to where we started our journey with lightning okay it was in june 2018 okay summer 2018 and we wanted to play around with lightning and so we had the very ambitious idea to open a lightning shop okay uh, and to sell this magnificent uh, bitcoin socks okay um, because we wanted to play around with the payment experience on on, on lightning um, maybe you well Back then, the network was much smaller. Maybe you can see it, there were like 500 nodes, okay? Um, like 1.5 thousand channels, and total capacity was 50 thousand US dollar. Okay, so, uh, yeah, it was like the early days. Uh, but, you know, so we had some problem, we had some issues, uh, and pretty much the same that we have today, which are like uh, liquid, how to manage your liquidity, basically, but, I mean, it was magic, you know, for the first time we had the, 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 we could experiment the magic of lightning, the fact that you could sell socks to some guy in Australia instantly, you know, and like doing payments instantly without any counterparty risk over the lightning network is something like uh, that fascinated us and that's why we decided to, you know, like stay in the space. Uh, but we have to say also that another limitation at the time was that the user experience was really Poor. Okay, the user onboarding was terrible. Okay, sorry, I don't know if Samsung is in the room, but that's what we found at the internet back then. Okay, uh, because how did it work? Well, basically, you mostly had to deal with anything through common lines. Okay, uh, there was no wallet, there was no tooling, there was nothing. Okay, so uh, yeah, it's true. It's fair to say that. We had a whole box of socks, okay, and we didn't sell them all, okay, so eventually we had to close our shop, okay, and now we have a lot of Bitcoin socks, okay, because the network was not too big at the time. Um, we kept, you know, thinking about Lightning and what we could do with it, okay, um, and, yeah, okay, yeah, that one. Um, and. We had a different idea, okay, we, we decided to quit the SOC business uh, because mainly we, are, we, we have a financial market background, okay. Uh, Lightning Network was really used for payment and we had this idea that we could use it for something else because with Lightning you can do instant settlement, okay. And for the first time in the history of finance, you can do instant settlement. And it's very important in a topic that we come from which is derivatives. Uh, maybe some of you I've already tried like derivatives trading platform like maybe BitMEX or FTX or, or Binance. And in the user experience, that there's something that bothers us, which is that uh, sending payments or receiving payment is a stressful experience. You know, it takes time. You have to make sure you have the right address, etc. And even if you've done it a dozen of times, it's always stressful. 
Okay, and it costs. So we said, why don't we build something on Lightning directly? Okay, a trading platform on Lightning in which uh, the user experience could be as smooth, as instant as possible. Because with Lightning, we can do that. Um, so it's not a good date. It was we shipped testnet version in December 19, and at the time we were thinking, how can we? Which tool can we use? And Joule, maybe some of you. Uh, know about it, Joule seemed like the perfect fit to us, okay, because it's, a, a, like, it's, a, it's an add-in in your browser which is connected to your node and thanks to it you can uh, access your funds directly, you know, so you could deposit funds and withdraw funds instantly, okay, so uh, we had this idea to play around with Joule, we thought it was the great, the best solution for us, so because it was non-custodial, because it was instant, because it enabled authentication uh, without revealing your identity, etc. And so we sent uh, a couple of uh, testnet invitation, okay, to alpha users. And in fact, we had really few feedback. Why is that? Because we realized that in fact, very few people had a node, okay, in December 2019. Um, okay, people don't have nodes. So we will, maybe we can deploy nodes for them, you know, and, uh, uh, and all they would have to do is enter macarons, you know, uh, to, to set it up. But it was even too complex. And so we had very few feedback and we were thinking, okay, no. Joule cannot be enough. We need to work with wallets. Okay, we need to add the possibility to trade on LN market using wallets, whether it's custodial uh, or non-custodial. Okay. Um, but it also come it also raised new question because the trading experience with Joule was really smooth. You, has, you, you just have an add-in and, and, and you can trade directly. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, yes. And, um, and before going mainnet, we thought, okay, we, we, we really want to have the best user experience possible. What are the pain points today? Well, the two main for us are Authentication. How can we make authentication on Lightning without revealing any personal information? First point, okay. And second pain point that we had was we wanted, uh, the goal of LN Market is, is to reduce counterparty risk, is to have funds as few time as possible. So how can we make a one-click deposit and one-click withdrawal experience? And one-click withdrawal, in fact, is not easy because as some of you may know on Lightning, if you want to withdraw funds, uh, you need to prepare an invoice, you need to send the invoice, etc., and we have to pay it. How can we fix that? How can we do a one-click withdrawal? Well, we came up with LNURL, the fantastic library developed by uh, Fiat Jaff and, and, and other contributors. Uh, and we decided to implement it both for authentication and for payment and withdrawal. Okay, now we even implemented Lightning address, so now you have the possibility to send funds, you know, to in as simple as sending an email, okay, using your username at lnmarkets.com. Okay. Um, it proved to be a good choice to us, okay, because when we look at, uh, when we dig in our data, we see that we have three login options on LN Markets, WebLN, which Joule uses, okay, now we have new solutions coming with Albi, credentials, you set up password, etc., and LNURL, and LNURL is by far, you know, the most widely used solutions. Okay, and we have very good feedback from users because basically you can try it on lnmarkets.com. It's just you have a QR code, you scan it, and you're logged in instantly. Okay, um, what's also interesting is that you know we, we've um, our app is now on Umbrella. Okay, and so between 2019 and now, you know, there's been Raspberry Blitz and Umbrella, which proved to be very popular solution for users to run their own nodes. You know, and you remember when we uh, when we launched testnet invitation, we had very few feedback, nobody was running a node, and now we are in Umbrella, and we have close to, now it's like 2,000 downloads of our app. So 2,000 people running their own node, downloading the app. So you can see, you know, how far we've been, and how the, the landscape has changed since then. Um, okay, going mainnet. So we had to set up our node. Okay, remember, we still didn't have a node. Okay, we were thinking about uh, like withdrawal and authentication now, uh, time to set up our node. So, mm, I think, yeah, it was at the end of 2019, the network grew bigger. There were like 5,000 nodes, uh, 32,000 channels, and capacity was close to 100 BTC. Okay, we went for an initial funding of 60 million sats, and we said, okay, we need to open channels, okay, because we, uh, the deposits and withdrawal, you know, we want as 
low fails as possible. So let's open them and let's connect to the main hub, the biggest hub in the network. Plus, if they are like, uh, if they have a financial business, it's a plus. So we connected to Async, to Bitfinex, to Breeze, to OpenNode, uh, Bitmex Research, Bitstamp, etc. a couple of nodes. Um, we decided to have a very loose policy, okay? No minimum capacity to open channel, uh, the lowest fee possible, okay, that we could have. So base fee of one sat, fee rate of 0 0.1 millisat. Uh, and we assumed that we would have a lot, lot of monitoring work, okay? Um, so, by the way, today, since we had this no minimum capacity for channel and zero fee, well, that's how uh, our node became popular, okay? So now we have like 400 channels and we have, a, until recently, we've had a single node for deposit, withdrawal and routing, okay? For invoice payment and routing. Uh, so we have 400 channels and our capacity, uh, well, well, went up to uh, uh, 5 BTC, something like that. Uh, and we assumed there was going to be a lot of monitoring work. Um, and then, but, uh, we went mainnet, okay, in March 20. So the exact, the exact date was March 11, uh, 20, okay, and some of you may remember that date, okay, because it was at the peak of the COVID crisis. And just after, you know, for the first day of shop is open, it's the first day you can now trade Bitcoin futures with leverage, okay, up to 50, and Bitcoin in like a couple of hours goes from 9K to 4K, okay? So it's a bloodbath, okay? The first day you open the shop, okay? Uh, we assumed there was gonna be a lot of rebalancing work, and you see that. And so you're almost like, wow, okay, uh, perfect. Um, yeah, we had some users said, wow, that's one huge kernel, we have to zoom out, you know? Uh, so very stressed that day, okay? Like, how are we gonna handle all that's gonna happen to us? And then, that's the magic, nothing happened. Like, almost nothing, okay? Otherwise, it would be a quite boring presentation, <laughs> okay? Uh, we had a few issues to deal with, but it turned out, and we had not priced it in, that, in fact, we didn't have much work to do, you know, uh, with our node. Why is that? Because, you know, we are not a lightning business, you know? You remember with our lightning socks, uh, maybe we could have had, if we were successful, the inbound capacity problem. You receive a lot of payments, but you cannot send. But us, you know, we are a derivatives trading platform, so what it means is that when people want to open a trade, they need to send us margin. Okay, so they send us a payment, which is margin, and boom, the trade is open. And whenever they want to close the position, they will get the margin plus their PNL. So in fact, on average, this has been pretty balanced. Okay, and we had not priced it in, but most of our channel have been balanced, and we can see it when we look at the total, uh, you know, volume of uh, uh, invoices and payments, you know, uh, with our node. So it's up to 80 BTC, and they are quite synced. Okay. Um, still, we have our daily routine. Okay, there's not nothing to do. Okay, otherwise, node manager would be the not manager at LN Market, the best job in the world, you do nothing. No, it's not that simple, okay? Uh, we still have to check, you know, our capacity with our biggest hubs. And it's proven to be interesting because we see what our biggest hubs is, where our users are or go through. So this is uh, the total amount, the total amount of uh, the channels we opened with specific nodes. And we've opened most of our channels with async, uh, with Bitfinex, with Breeze, with Wallet of Satoshi, with Moon, with Bitstamps. So basically, where the users who want to go trading are. So as part of our daily routine, we check that we have enough local capacity so that users can withdraw. Uh, and that's what we are most focused on, that users can withdraw at any time, that they don't have a withdrawal failure. Okay. Um, the second thing, we, and if not, we open new channels. Okay. The second thing we are checking is if there has been channel closed. Okay, because this can happen, and maybe some of you who run nodes have noticed it recently, uh, there's been more and more force close, you know, in the, in the past months. So since March 20, we had like 800 channel closure, uh, and in fact, half of them, you know, well, force close account for uh, half of our cooperative close, which is a lot, okay. And force close usually happen when a node is offline for too long. Uh, so it's also something that we monitor. Now, speaking of routing, well, 
maybe you remember we had this very loose policy. Basically, it's free to go through our node. Okay, so we attract people, we attract uh, payment flow. We've been able to route more than 200 BTC so far, uh, which is great. And we've seen, you know, a huge acceleration uh, in the past year in terms of amount. So it's great, but we also encountered some issues, uh, especially with some of the uh, biggest hubs that attract a lot of liquidity. Uh, and async, which is there, is, is one of them. Uh, we had some issues with async or Breeze because they are major hubs, they attract liquidity, uh, and in the end, our local capacity got drained. Okay, and we could not, so remember our main goal is to let users withdraw, we could not let this happen for too long. Okay, so what we had to do is uh, increase fees for a few specific nodes, increase routing fees towards a few specific nodes. Okay, because we wanted to keep, like, uh, no routing fee for the user. But when you do that, you have to be very careful, okay? If that happens to you, be careful, communicate properly in advance, okay? That's what we tried to do. So we decided to increase fees with uh, async, for example, or, or, or Breeze, and we communicated a lot, like, be careful if you go, we're going to increase the fees, so be careful if you want to route, but, uh, you know, we still had some payments routed by us to async or Breeze, and uh, some people got wrecked, basically, you know, they paid these very huge routing fees to us due to this increase. Okay. So, we are a public node, so basically they just reached out to us, and we said, oh, we're sorry, the idea was not to, uh, uh, to do a rug pull and to get routing fees, you know, very quickly. So it could be an idea for an exit scam, you know, you become a very popular uh, routing node and boom, you increase the fees, okay. Uh, but that was not the idea, so uh, we reimbursed them. Okay. So this was about routing fee, and now Victor is going to talk about withdrawal fee. Yeah, basically, um, LN Market, uh, at LN Market, we love, we love the Lightning UX, and uh, for the few times in the past, we have uh, tried to choose like a very simple way to handle withdraw. So basically, we were not asking users to pay withdrawal fee, because we uh, were thinking it was the best UX for everyone. But we have foreseen some issues, and one day a guy reached us with a pretty simple setup, and uh, we have like monitoring stuff and uh, like um, safeguards for everything. And he was telling us that he managed to uh, steal SAT from us. So how did he did that? And basically, he had it like a routing node with a very high fee, and. Behind this routing node, he had it like uh, another node, and it was the only road which we can reach him. So uh, we didn't have a really good like uh, fees uh, check <laughs> at this time, but it was not that bad. Like the maximum margin is one million sat, and we said like, hey, you can only pay like uh, one person max in fees, so it was 10k set. So I f we thought it was fine, but also a little bit generous. And so this guy uh, reached us and told us that. And after that, we <laughs> added a new fix. And this fix comes at a UX cost. So uh, we have to make the user pay their fees. <laughs> so sadly, it's not a good uh, solution for us, but we had to do it. And it comes with another other issue. It's like end link fees in the Lightning, in the Lightning network for me, I think is the, like the biggest, uh, not the biggest, but one of the one of the challenge in terms of UX, because nobody wants to pay it. So you have to find someone willing to pay it. And if you are a platform, you mostly you don't want to pay it because you don't have like the the, the end on uh, when you are making the payment. So uh, we are looking to see uh, maybe improvement in the in these topics. Yeah, we're still working on it, you know, to find a good UX. Like, now, we have to let users pay for routing fees, otherwise we got attack, okay? But how to find the best UX with it is still a challenge, you know, and it's still something we are working on. Um, now, if you look at, you know, like, payments and invoice, you know, through our node, um, if we look at the distribution of deposits, for example, it's interesting to see. So, uh, you cannot deposit more than 1 million sats on our platform. Um, and in fact, uh, thanks to uh, Arcane, which is here, uh, we found out that 50% um, of our deposits are for less than 50 US dollars. 
Again, 30% of our deposits are for less than 10 US dollars. So in fact, we realized, thanks to Arkane, that we are some kind of micro-gambling company, <laughs> you know, uh, in which people are happy to gamble a few sats uh, at Ellen Market. But this can lead, you know, we had some very good traders, so it can lead to macro gains, uh, and it has also like led us to, uh, you know, pay our biggest payment uh, on Lightning has been a 2 BTC uh, payoff, <laughs> paid, uh, paid over Lightning. So not bad. Um, now if we look at how the SATs flow, you know, in the Lightning Network, um, when, when there are deposits, you know, so when we issue an invoice uh, with LN URL pay, um, we don't get any information. But, you know, when we, uh, when people withdraw their funds from LN Market, then, uh, you know, we can get an idea of the topology of the network uh, and how, you know, SATs go through uh, you know, how that flows through the Lightning Network. So if we look at zero hop payments, okay, so it's users withdrawing directly, okay, well, we can see that uh, some users are some of our whales, for example, so they have uh, the majority of the users, so, so they have a, a large share of the payments. Well, most of them, you know, we have a good API, and I think they had badly configured the bot, okay, so they did a lot, lot, lot of deposit and withdraw. Uh, here we can see the main custodial wallets, okay, which account for, uh, they are, well, they account for one of the top share of, of payments. We can see wallet of Satoshi and, 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 uh, and Moon. It's, it's Moon, right? Yeah, and Moon. Um, if we look at one hop payments through our hubs, and if we check intermediate nodes, um, well, we can see that uh, non-custodial wallets like async and breeze are very popular choices. They implemented trampoline routing, so it makes sense, you know, that uh, they are leading in terms of volume for one hop payments. Um, and, you know, we check like one hop, two hop, five hop payments, and that's when you realize that Lightning is really a network of payments, okay? Because we have up to nine hop payments, okay? Payments that go through nine hops. So of course, the vast majority of payments are between zero and two hops, but up to nine, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, with all of stuff happening, we learn a few lessons of how to manage a Lightning node. So basically, we try to do the simple task like uh, closing a small channel uh, or uh, closing uh, inactive channels. But also, we uh, we we like stop accepting small channel capacity because it was like making too much uh, too much hassle to manage for us. And uh, and after that, <laughs> if even doing this, we had some issues. Like our node went offline a few times. Um, so, first time, uh, thanks to our uh, good community, <laughs> we were uh, we were uh, properly uh, pro properly said that it was online, and uh, bon, we also have monitoring tools. Don't worry. <laughs> and so, doing this, uh, I'm the developer, so most of the time I'm lazy, and uh, I just uh, make the VM hosting the Lightning, Lightning Node bigger and stronger. And it went okay for a few, few, a few months, maybe a year. And after that, our node was becoming like slow, laggish, etc. And we had to come with another solution. So this solution was uh, is pretty uh, elegant. I think it's like what, like, like what uh, Async or Breeze is doing. But we have uh, like other issue because we are also making payments and receiving, receiving it. So uh, thanks to uh, Alex uh, Bosworth from uh, LND who helped us a lot uh, on these topics. Uh, we went from a single node architecture. So we got only one node handling everything, payments, uh, routing, uh, so deposit, resdo, et cetera. And the internal database went really big and it makes the nodes slow and <laughs> not uh, quite responding. So. Knowing that, we went with a uh, like dual node archit architecture, and uh, so we kept our first node for the routing because it has a good track record, good reputation. It was handling most of our stuff, and uh, people know it. And we added like a node 
behind this one, like a private node, we, we can call it, and the private node is only connected with a private channel, and so we have a more fine-grained uh, management of our Lightning liquidity uh, doing so, and uh, one of the good advantages and benefits is that we are not at risk more than what's in the private node channel. Yep. Um, well, thanks for listening. Uh, if you like more of this content, we, we write, uh, you know, some kind of bi-weekly newsletter, okay, at lnmarkets.substack.com. So feel free to register. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, I think that's it for us. So thank you, guys. Thank you.